Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. This is our class number two, and we're going to be talking about keyboard shortcuts, color basics, blending modes, and we're going to start painting what we started last week. So let's get started. Hey guys, what's up? This is the art class number two, and we're going to start by talking about the keyboard shortcuts. A lot of people have mentioned that in the comments. So let's get started right away because I don't want this class to be super long. So the first one we're going to talk about is going to be <coughs> uh, the B, that one exactly. The B is the brush, which is the one I'm using right now. It's really kind of like intuitive because it's a, the letter B is the if, for brush. Um, the second one will be the, the letter um, E, which is the eraser. This one right here, I can erase stuff, so that's self-explanatory. Um, so we have these two already. Uh, we also, I also use the zoom, which is the letter uh, Z on the keyboard. But this is an old Photoshop, so to zoom in or zoom out, I just press Z to zoom in. And if I want to zoom out, I just press Alt, uh, which is the secondary button for everything. So... <clears throat> Z will be uh, zoom, but if I press Alt, will be zoom out. So that's it for the zoom. Also, the B, the brush, if I press the Alt, will be the eyedropper. Uh, I didn't put that one in the list, but the eyedropper is the eye on the keyboard. But it's way better if you use combine with the Alt, the B with the Alt. If you you if you're using B and press Alt, you can see how it changes. Uh, so I can select another color, all right? So that's way better to use than the eye. For a long time, I used the eye for the the eyedropper, but it's better with, with the B and the Alt combined. So <clears throat> this is one that I use a lot, which is R. It's for the smooch tool. But what, what's going to happen is that in the new Photoshop, the R is for rotate. So the smudge tool, you can find it here. It's this little finger here. This one, the smudge tool, is for doing this. You can you can do some blending of colors with that. That's uh, one, of, one of the functions you can use the smudge tool for. Um, so we're going to be using a lot of those. Another one will be, let's see. <clears throat> Uh, the F um, key, the F key I use it for the view mode. If I press F, you can see how it changes the screen a little. If I press it again, it turns the full screen uh, mode. If I press it again, I go back to the window mode, which is I can see several screens. If I want this one to be um, to occupy occupy all the space, I press F. F to make it a little bigger, and then F to full screen, and then F again if you wanted to see. So you're gonna see a lot of uh, this going on all the time. Um, what else will be the space bar is the one I use to move. So a, go a cool exercise will be um, zoom out, zoom in, move, grab a color with the Alt, um, then you can zoom out, I don't know, go here, grab this color and move again and paint here. It's some, this is kind of exercise you can do to, to grab the, the speed using the key. Because what you're going to notice is that I, I use a, you will, you will notice when I use the, the keys, of course. Um, but it's really kind of like you don't think it's you don't think too much on it when when you're working um, when you know exactly where the keys are you just press the buttons I know you have I have if I have B and I press the alt I can use the other color if I press the the spacebar I can move so it's stuff like that <clears throat> and I have these ones to increase or decrease the brush size, which is the size of the brush. You can see how it goes bigger and 
uh, smaller, bigger and smaller. Uh, you can set that in here. You go to edit, you go to keyboard shortcuts, you go to tools, and you go way down to where it says uh, decrease brew size, increase brew size, and you can um, put the ones you want. But you have to be uh, beware of the language where that your keyboard is. If you notice right here in the corner, in the window bar, it says um, ESP, which is Spanish. If I press Alt Shift, it changes to English. See, see the change. Then uh, here I have it on Spanish. If I if I do it again, I have it on English. Uh, that's because in English you have uh, N. Um, I mean, a, you you don't have you don't have this letter here in Spanish, which is the uh, uh, the letter Ñ, which is an N with a little symbol here. And I I can change that by using the Alt Shift um, keys. So Alt Shift with the language. So you have to be aware of the keyboard language. Um, another thing will be the numbers will be the opacity of the brush. If I press one, it's 10%, two, 20%, three, 30%, four, 40%, 5, 50%, 60%, 7, 70%, 8, 80%, 9, 90%, and 0 is 100. Um, so we, we have that, the numbers, increase and decrease brew size, spacebar to move, and of course the alt to secondary function. So that's it. These are the keys that I use all the time. Okay, so I forgot to mention about the tabular, which is the the expert mode, which is no tools at all in the screen. You can use this if you want to, if you don't want to see any tools in your space and workspace. So you can see a clean um, uh, view of everything. If you, if you combine that with the F, you can have a full screen everything. It should hide the the windows bar, but it isn't, it's not happening, I don't know why. But don't freak out when you push the tabular and you don't see anything else. If, if you press the F, you can have a full screen of everything <clears throat> like this. Okay, so we got that. Some people ask me to explain something about colors a little. I'm not an expert in the theme, but I, I know that <laughs> there are the primary colors, which are uh, yellow, blue, and red. So I, I'm going to put those right here. So we have these ones are the primary colors. Let's put like this. Um, I don't know why, but I cannot get a really green color with the blue on the computer, but this is the best I can do at the moment. <coughs> um, so there are the secondary colors, which is the combining uh, any of these two colors, like any of these two will will make a secondary color so I'm going to do a basic blending of colors which is I'm going to put 100% of this color then I'm going to go to the opacity and press 5 so you can see there is 50% here uh, of the next color that I want to pick and I'm going to pick it with the brush pressing alt which is the eyedropper and I'm going to press it on top of the red so now I have the red color of 50% and if I paint on top of the uh, yellow obviously I'm going to get an orange because if 100% yellow 50% red could be uh, the other way could be 100 red 50% um, yellow and reality what you have is 50 of each color so if I have red let's 100% red and 50% blue, kind of like a purple color. And if I do it here, and 
uh, yellow I have a green color so that should be green um, but there's no way I can get it in the computer for some reason so these are secondary colors <clears throat> now if you do the same but picking this one like 100% of this one with 50% of this one you can have the the between those colors like a, a reddish orange um, <coughs> stuff like that sorry okay so now what I'm doing is just trying to blend this of course I'm doing it automatic like painting pressing 5 picking the color and just blending that's like the most easiest way to blend is changing that opacity you can control the opacity by hand but that will be like a little bit more frustrating <laughs> if you don't get it right so um what else do we have here well you can you can have there's the primary colors which are these ones these are primary colors we have the secondary which are these ones right here uh let's see this green well this this one looks more green than the other one but okay and this one so um, the there are the complementary colors which are picking a primary color and then doing its opposite um, secondary which is if I pick it yellow the complementary will be this one and uh, the green will be the red and the blue will be the orange so we have for the yellow will be the purple that's complementary for the red will be the green a real green not this green let's say it's this one the one I pick oh, no. forget about it that green is even worse let's pick this one looks a little bit better uh, and the blue will be the orange so that's why in Christmas the red and the green look really good really does look good and the yellow and the purple look good also and the blue and the orange also look good it will be this orange sorry okay so we have the primary colors which are these ones <clears throat> we have the these are primary these are secondary and these are the complementary colors so there's a little bit of color theory I don't want to get into much detail in that but because um, it's not like I'm, I'm an expert on it it's just the stuff I know from what I've studied so so let's get started with this tutorial then okay so another thing will be all these colors that use red and yellow will be warm colors so all the ones that are this side and these ones that use blue are cold colors so just for you just so you know all the ones with yellow like starting from the green the green is kind of like a middle thing um, even this one here so this one are the hotter hotter colors and you can also relate that with light and fire and stuff like that and the blue colors you can relate them with water um, the sky stuff like that so it's kind of really easy to know which ones are cold and which ones are warm so you can see that in the original painting of Alice in Wonderland we have a kind of like a cold palette even that is green and you can say that green has uh, yellow on it and it will be warm it's actually kind of cold because the background has a little bit more blue than than yellow for the green and uh, the water also is blue so it's kind of like a I don't know it's not sad it's not a sad palette of colors but I want to do something different than that <clears throat> 
So I'm going to paint under my line art, which is <clears throat> already made on a computer, which makes it really easy. But uh, some people ask me, how do you paint under your line art? So the easiest way to explain it is doing something similar. So let's pretend that this is a white paper and it has a drawing on it. Let's say, <clears throat> I don't know a little tree or something like that so I'm going to be using a blending mode uh, blending mode are effects on the is a type of layer that you use and you can have tons of different blending modes and combine them and doing awesome stuff with them so um, there are ones that you can use at your advantage so let's say I have my drawing but I want to paint uh, with a green color under the drawing and but I can't I won't be able to because I won't be able to see anything right so what do we use we use a blending mode here where it says layers I'm going to take this out so you guys can see uh, you can select uh, multiply and when you put multiply what it does is that it takes out everything that is white so if you have something gray obviously that's going to make an effect meaning something gray here let's use normal again to go back and let's put uh, something gray on it let's put some gray thing here so what it's going to do is burn everything that is um, <clears throat> black and whatever is white is going to take it out. So if I use multiply, you can see that the gray stays, but at, at, like at some level, but everything that is white is out. But if you use the contrary, which is the add, uh, where is it? Uh, it could be add, it could be screen. Uh, well, actually, it's not add. Or here it is, linear dodge add. Um, what you have, what happens is, it takes out everything that is black, and only the white works. So it's the contrary. See, so you can see how it burns everything. Also, another one like this one will be the screen. It's kind of like a better version of it. Actually, it doesn't burn things too much. So if you have a drawing and you want to use this you can use multiply but if your paper looks great uh, I mean if you <laughs> obviously you have to look great if, if it looks gray what you go, what's going to happen if when you paint with your color under that is going to make it um, what what I'm doing I'm painting on the okay big mistake I was painting on the multiply uh, layer so let's block this layer and paint on the bottom so if I paint under the things that are gray you can see how it looks looks like this looks dirty so just be aware of that okay so you can see that I took some um, reference I found on internet about the tangled uh, concept art these are, are these paintings I'm not going to do exactly this but this is cool word like inspiration and I want them I want them little here so I don't rely too much on watching them like with really detail okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint under this layer but what I'm going to do is to turn, turn this layer down with the numbers if I have the the H letter which is also the hand I can turn down the the level of opacity of the of the layer with the numbers or you can go here and change the opacity which is the same thing all right <clears throat> so let's start we're not going to do we're not going to or to create a new layer you can you can press ctrl shift n and you can have a new layer, you can put color layer, for example, and it will appear here immediately, see? <clears throat> okay, um, if you want to merge layers down, let's say you have 
one layer with this color then another oh let's create one then another one with blue then another one with another blue you can have all these layers differently and if you want them together you can just press ctrl e and you can merge the layers if you want to do it by you want to do it by hand you can select those two do a right click and you can go to merge layers oops merge layers right here and you go, just go together there are only one layer in there all right so <clears throat> let's start so for starting we need green i'm going to pick it with the alt button because i'm using the b uh, and let's use a soft brush first one soft brush now that's too soft for blending colors they use this one it's just a normal brush uh, with the uh, other dynamics or transfer in the new Photoshop that's it. it doesn't have anything else anything else important I mean and then I'm going to pick this blue right here and I'm going to blend them a little I'm using the pressure if you don't have the pressure you can just change the the opacity with the numbers in the keyboard how I explained at the beginning and I'm using this other blue which is darker blue and I'm going to just blend these colors there and I'm going to make a test I'm going to just paint here to see what happens um, so I'm painting let's use a soft brush here I'm painting without really knowing uh, what I'm doing like how is it going to look let's put this on top okay um, I just need I need a uh, something some cool background when I mean cool I mean cool in terms of temperature of color it means blue I need a blue background I need some blue in the water obviously <clears throat> let's use this little bit of green here to see how it looks okay so I'm trying to not be too uh, drastic too hard with the colors I'm just putting a little bit of green there let's use the dark green here just a little just a little to see what happens so I'm starting to like this see I'm starting to like what I see here on the background but I need something uh, even darker so I'm going to pick this dark blue color right there let's use the other brush this one before you ask me can I get that brush you're just going to <laughs> press F5 pick any circle brush that you find and click on transfer that's it it's not I, I even taking off this smoothing thing that is doing nothing I could even go down in spacing so it doesn't look so repeated but that's it, it doesn't have anything else it's not a special magic brush that I'm using okay and for that I'm going to put little colors here to suggest shadow where I know there will be like here under this um, trees will be shadow but I'm trying not to do it with full opacity like I'm still maintaining some of the green in the background so it's kind of like a really relaxed approach don't be so hurry all the time to finish the paintings come on um, so I'm going to put a little bit of blue in here uh, but you can see how I'm not doing so much contrast I still with a low contrast doesn't have too much contrast I'm not using dark super darker colors because as I go into toward us like going this direction um, and the tree I will have to be darker in colors with more contrast because they are near in the, in this background I know there's a, there is a little bit of fog in there like um, uh, how do I say that I don't know the word in English but it's kind of like a mood that everything is kind of like foggy uh, because it's a little bit far and stuff like that I really like this blue coming here from the top 
So this is the kind of thing you sh guys should experiment at the beginning. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit here. I'm going to take a little bit more of this blue, put it here, stuff like that. So I need something interesting going on. I'm going to concentrate my lighting in this part. This is going to be because the character should be here. So because the character is going to be there, I'm going to, to make a light that hits all this part. I'm putting this here because I want really the light to kind of mimic this one that we have here with the tree. It could even have some kind of shape because light is not perfect and maybe you have one tree that you cannot see that is casting a shadow here. So imagine that there is stuff outside the frame that is casting uh, shadows and stuff but it cannot be just here we have to have some light in the background also so I'm going to put some lighting that is going to be hitting these places maybe a little bit here and a little bit here and here okay so that is my guide for where the light is going to hit okay I, we know this is Alice it's going to be here so I'm going to block this layer. I push the little um, lock here so I don't mess up that part. I'm going to create a new layer, Control Shift N, and I'm going to pick warm colors now. <clears throat> I don't get rid of this, I'm going to keep that. So I'm going to pick this same green that we were using, and I'm going to put some yellow here, and let's pick some of this green to see how can we blend those colors and I'm just blending selecting with the eyedropper and, and using all the ones that I have here to see if, what colors can I come can I get that are interesting also let's put a little bit of blue in there because we don't want to be like super super uh, warm so let's just try how it looks this looks too white let's put this one instead this one is way better not not fearless I'm not using full I blend a little I blend a little bit with the other one so I got this uh, weird tone and I'm going to use a little bit more of the dark green that we have here to put it like here maybe could be here and here um, I'm using several colors so I don't want you guys to get like super um, worried about oh my god what is he doing in there I'm using different colors right now uh, if you have different colors it will look way better at the end because it gives another atmosphere so if you look it from far away you can see kind of like it looks like the light is hitting there obviously you're gonna, you don't want to have the full effect until everything is painted, painted, but you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Let's put a little bit in here and here. All right. So though those will be, will be our lighting spots. Let's put a little bit here. Also, and let's just blend. Um, I'm going to use the smudge tool. Let's click it so you guys know where it is. It's this one. And you can use, actually, you could use any of these ones, but let's use a soft one. This one. If it works. If I don't see, if I don't see it working, I just stop using it. Right now, I'm not liking the result. So, what I'm going to do is just pick the color with the eyedropper and blend it by hand. When I say by hand, is I'm just using 40% opacity here 40% and I'm just painting on top so because I'm just using 40% I'm blending with the color that is under that one and if I pass the same color um, on top of the one that I had what I get is the blend color <clears throat> So something like this will work. 
all right it's looking a little bit better uh, I think I need a darker green so I'm going to use the same blue here and I'm going to put it with this green right here to have a darker green so that's what I got right there I feel like I should put a little bit more of these uh, light spots and use a brighter green. So I'm going to take it right from the palette of colors and put it there. And here a little. These one are too desaturated. Okay, so that will be enough, I think, for the for what I want right now with the background. Uh, colors in terms of the green stuff uh, now I think I need more shadow so I'm going to use this kind of like black that is not full black full black will be this will be full black so it's kind of like a gray let's put it with a little bit of blue and the green again also let's try put it this new blue with a little bit of uh, purple see what happened something like that I'm just going to put it there in the background really subtle okay so I have something interesting now here let's put it against these leaves Something like this, I think it could work. All right, and we're going to go with this brown color right here. I'm going to put a little bit of blue, we can kind of like a brown, grayish, a little bit of white that I took from the, this canvas. And I'm going to try to do something like these trees. I like the trees on the on the um, R4 tangle. So I'm going to put a little of those colors in here to see what can I get. I need to get the light part really interesting. So I knew that the light was here, kind of, which here. So the light is going to hit there. Okay, the light is going to hit here. So where's the light coming from? It's coming from here. So there are a few leaves here that are going to block the light, casting shadows. So I need, uh, I need to put some white in there and to put a little bit of yellow, orange. To get the feeling that it's warm. <clears throat> Something like this maybe. I don't want to use too much strength in these colors. Let's use a little bit of white. Because these trees are actually white looking, the ones for tangled tangled are kind of white looking trying to get the same color at least really close something like this I think and let's try some of the dark part so the shadow part could be something like maybe with this color here Let's use a little bit of this purple and a little bit of the original brown to see what can I get. You can blend and select these colors. The thing is you guys will know when I'm using the the 
when I'm using the eyedropper because I'm just selecting you have to kind of know when I use the eyedropper then just click out to keep painting so you're just going to see how my brush turns into the eyedropper and kind of practically catch when I pick another color that will be interesting um, sometimes I even don't know when I, when I do it <laughs> um, okay I don't know I'm still trying to find it uh, I don't like it this much what I'm doing right now <clears throat> let's put a little bit of more white maybe So it kind of uh, looks like really lit and obviously you know that what's going to happen also is that all this part is like super green super super green bright green let's put a little bit more green kind of looking yellow there and here it goes dark because here is the light goes till here also till here so this is dark this is gonna be dark also so this is another kind of composition this is composition by light uh, would you do composition by light obviously um, you, you're going to see more where it's lit than where it's not and that's really self-explanatory it's not too much mystery um, there's another kind of composition when you have all those together you kind of it's kind of impossible that you're well it's not impossible obviously but it's kind of impossible that your painting looks bad because you're doing the it's like a recipe if you have all these elements it should look good you know what I mean? <clears throat> for example a Michael Bay movie like Transformers has all the elements of a blockbuster movie but there's one ingredient that fails completely which is the script so if the script is not good it doesn't matter how many special effects you have it's just not going to look good maybe that will be once you could translate that in paintings that if you don't have a good idea on the painting but it, it's well rendered it will be the, it won't be the same so I, uh, forget about what I say it's not relatable <clears throat> what am I doing till here I thought here was the lake the lake is here come on man okay so Oh, because this part is another kind of grass obviously yeah I'm going to do it the same maybe I'll change it a little later it was another kind of grass <clears throat> I forget I forgot about that really really forgot about that okay so let's put a little bit more of yellow here you can see that's too much yellow. Let's use uh, one of the original greens. So we have different kinds of green. <clears throat> okay, I hope you guys are painting with me right now. Okay, so let's put a little bit of more white because now I'm more confident with what I'm doing let's put a little bit more of white and let's put that with a little bit of orange to have this kind of a um, more lit color of the tree that could work good nice what's going to happen here the, there is a bounce light the bounce light is when the light hits comes right here right to the grass okay but then what happens is that it bounces 
it bounces in all directions. So an example of that will be it bounces like this. So what does this mean? It means that we should lead this tree branches a little with green. Not too much, just a little, something like this. And there will be enough to understand that that's light reflected. Color bleeding is called. So let's put a little bit more of color bleeding here. It's not more interesting when you say color bleeding. It just bounce light. That's it. I don't even understand my drawing in this part. What did I do here with those three branches? I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> and yeah, if you see it from far away, it, it's kind of working. Um, I will change some stuff. Like I could have one branch here on the light, maybe. Um, this part is going to be a little darker. Maybe we could use more dark in here. We should use more dark in here. Uh, obviously we need some details for the volume, but this is kind of like the hardest part of the painting. We could use some um, of the bright greens here where the light is hitting, but then because this is turning to the back we could use the other green, this one, and it works beautifully. Maybe like this. Okay. Uh, let's use a little bit of that this uh, color here. Maybe there. Now it's more about how much time I can. Uh, spend on this painting for it to look good. Obviously, when we, when we paint the water, will be the water will be a bitch. <laughs> it will be like really difficult to paint, but it's okay, one step at a time. Um, okay, so this green of the tree is going to be darker green. I'm going to use a really dark green. This one. When I say green, I say this one that is. Um, mixed with blue I want to use that one and for the bright part of the tree because it should have some leaves and stuff that are the light will be a green but it will be not so bright it will be a not so bright green but it will be brighter than the one that I'm using right now it will be like this one let's say so that is the bright the brightest that this tree leaves can get all right um let's try to put some blue in this grass doesn't work let's see mm -mm. i'm not feeling i'm not feeling it just try to see if i can change the color of the grass a little so it looks different than the other grass, but I don't like it really. I don't like to have that difference in color of the grass. Let's just go back. And this is because I'm using the palette of colors. Because if it was if you I was selecting colors from here, I could go way bright here. But I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> really hard <laughs> not to do that. Um because I want you guys to learn how to how to um, blend colors with a palette. It's really interesting when you're doing it because it gives you another some limitations, and you just have to get the best that you can with what you have. So it's really interesting what you can come up with uh, when using a palette of colors like that. Then what you can do is obviously later you could go and change the brightness and contrast. You could have a brighter 
painting, of course, but that's another thing. So we will talk about that when we are finishing this painting. Still need a lot of work to do. Okay, so now I'm going to pick this shadow color and I'm going, let's create a new layer. I create a new layer and I put it, this color right here where these three branches are and I'm going to change the opacity. See how I change the opacity with the numbers? So let's say 60% I think is okay and I'm going to use that percentage of, of opacity on the layer I'm going to pick that color I just pick that color and I'm painting with it in a new layer because if I use the same I will be painting on the 60% color colored layer so it's not worth using anymore these ones because are closer will have this color which is more contrast it looks closer but the things that are far away should have uh, less contrast colors let you use a little bit of the lead color here. If I hide light in there, I should have lit uh, this little bit of foreground also. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Let's see what else can I try here. A little bit of, a little bit of dark here. <coughs> Let's put a little bit of this blue here. Okay, so for the water, let's use the dark blue. Uh, it will look too fake. We need some green. So I picked this green color here. So I have this. This is what I got for water, which is obviously not of this color and that's it. We need to put some reflections and everything. But this class will be too long if I do that, so let's, um, let's see what can we do to keep working on this. I don't know if I paint it and then put a, a speed up version. I, I, I guess you guys will not like that. Okay, so I'm just going to continue with it and later we can decide what to do. I'm gonna have to think and do some tests with the water later, but I'm going to leave that to later. Uh, what I know is that we need to do reflections and stuff. We need to put some of the colors on top. Um, but I don't want to explain something that I actually don't totally know, so <clears throat> after doing some practice on it, maybe I could get a grasp and explain it better. I will prefer that. We need some uh, reflections and shadow of the rocks. That's pretty basic um, thing of water, but it, it doesn't. It do, it's not going to look like water until I really work on it. Um, and since I have to give this class on one hour, because it's not will be crazy for me, for my time, I'm gonna have to cut a little bit, uh, and I don't want to. I want to be in real time. So I'm going to use a really the darkest color that I have here, which is with the blue. Do you have it on the back on the foreground here? So it helps the composition. And I'm still painting under the liner. I haven't started painting on top. When I paint on top of the liner, is it's it's go it goes down. <laughs> it's like okay, this is now I'm painting for the final. Right now we're just applying colors and see how things are working, stuff like that. So, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Leaves a little bit of brown here, maybe, I'm not sure if this color works, I think it does.
Yeah, it doesn't look bad. Let's keep that one. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, so I think somehow the tree doesn't convince me yet. I think I need some light on this tree on the top. Maybe a little bit of the leaves here. We need some light in there. Obviously this tree is not finished. We need a lot of work in here. Um, obviously. But the thing is where? Uh, I will say we should need some we need some light spots here with the in the tree branch. And maybe a cast shadow somehow. Something like this. It looks like the the leaves are cutting the shadow somehow. There. Something like that. Yeah, I think that works. Maybe a little of, of those light beams, like a light just hitting some place in here, uh, going through the leaves. That's really interesting effect. Yep looks nice all right yeah I think it that's that work that's working um, let's keep doing that something like this yep and a little bit more light in these ones yeah I think that's looking better let's use the dark green and some parts here um, the darker green this one Now we're in business. Um, I think here is too much. You have to look at it for far away also. See if you like it, how it looks from far away. Um, this is pretty much kind of like the colors I'm going to use at the end. For the flowers, let's try something different. Let's use white. We're going to use completely white, so let's use white with a little bit of pink. So it will be something like this. And by the way, I, I have to say it again. I'm blending the colors with the, with the, I'm blending the colors with the opacity of the pan. I'm not pressing any key for the blending. Like if I need less opacity, I just press less of the press less pressure on the brush that's it okay so these ones are going to be in the spotlight uh, will be the, the most lit but the other ones I should blend this pink with a little bit of that um, blue this one this blue color and I'll get something darker but it's not gray or black maybe darker let's go darker something like this yeah I, I like this better so you know it's darker but it's not um, just a white darker will be gray no it's not gray it's bluish gray or something like that get it it's not completely gray you have to get away from that 
using those colors value only value if you were working in a black and white image yes of course but this is not so get a white from the full white and the full black we're going to use black at some, at some point i know it i like to use black on my paintings but try to get away from it that's all i say i'm not saying not don't use it i just say use it like a last resource when you want something to really really go black because in reality there is not such thing as full black at least we're talking about a cave and that will depend because if you use a camera the camera will adjust as much as it, as it can to the lighting of the scene and when you take the picture even that is not with flash you will see more lit than in real life so um, there's a lot of stuff going on <clears throat> let's use a bit of this color here to bring up that um, it's kind of like a um, tree branch that's coming out of here this group of leaves let's make a little bit of shadow here and here something like that <clears throat> I think it's coming out really nice uh, what I don't what doesn't really convince me is this foreground here I think you need something but I don't know what I don't know what it is it's missing well I actually know it's more saturation but how can I get more saturation with this I really don't know we need more color but we cannot use it so let's put a little bit of white I mean um, yellow a little bit of orange to see what can I get see if I can make it look warmer than what it is because if we are going dark with blue we should go um, clearer with yellow and white and the time is up so this is it for today's lesson guys I really hope you enjoy this class we're gonna have to keep this on the next one and I hope I will finish it because it's, yeah, I don't want you guys to watch this like in a 10 episode thing <laughs> hopefully it will be like in the next one I'll just finish this or at least close, really close to finish and maybe there I could make a um, time lapse thing that you have you don't have to watch everything uh, how I made it but let me know in the comments let me know if you will like this to be like a, I don't care how much time you spend on it I want to see it how you finish it in real time <laughs> just let me know because this is the way that is uh, going to be from now on this is going to be the format uh, how I do my my tutorials just in the real time so just let me know okay write me a comment give me a thumbs up if you like it uh, share whatever you can that supports me if you want to support me even more you can go to my patreon page you can download this PSD because I want to upload it in my PSD um, in my patreon page I mean and everything else right now I didn't do I didn't did I didn't do any brush but if I create a brush it will be on my patreon page right away uh, just support me if you can if you can't there's no problem at all you can just support me by sharing um, and liking my Facebook page and liking my videos and everything so see you in the next class hope you guys enjoyed if you want to support my tutorials and my art please click the link on the description that will take you to my patreon page and you can see the project that I'm doing at the moment which is a book that I'm writing and you can see the stuff that I post in my patreon page is not like a lot of things but they get to see 
the complete the full uh, pages when they are drawn uh, you will get access to the reading uh, when I finish the writing um, you get some stuff that uh, other people will not be able to see um, I'm also going to post the these tutorials in full HD with the PSDs on it if you want the PSD and maybe you can use the palette of colors that I used uh, the brushes uh, when I create a new one I post the brushes in there um, in this case in this tutorial I didn't create a new one but it, if, if I had they will be there uh, it's just two dollars per month so I hope you enjoy the tutorial and you can give me your support thank you